Most visitors come to Hong Kong for the urban attractions, and yes, many get their exercise in the markets. But here's a little known fact. Country parks make up about three quarters of the city's land. This is Hong Kong's greener side, and it's well worth exploring. Hiking is a popular pastime and there are several long distance trails. For some great coastal scenery, the Hong Kong Trail stretches for 50 kilometers. Well, I just love coming here because it's so beautiful, just really peaceful. Uh, you've got the ocean over here and the hills. You just never think you're in Hong Kong. It's really great. So I come up running with the dogs and that's it. It's beautiful. The 100 kilometer Macklehose Trail, named after one of the former governors, is the longest trail. Sai Kung Country Park in the New Territories is one of the best spots to hook up with it. On a Sunday morning, this park is also the place to take in some local forms of exercise. You might even be invited to a Chinese barbecue. Squid balls, anyone? Tourists aren't the only ones who make Hong Kong their stopover destination. Every winter, thousands of migratory birds touch down in Mai Po in the New Territories. These marshes and mudflats cover 300 hectares and attract about 270 bird species. With a special permit from the World Wildlife Fund, you can tour this fragile ecosystem. The main feeding area for most of these migratory birds when they come down here is the intertidal mudflats out in Deep Bay. And when the tide goes out, this mudflat is heaving with mudskippers, crabs, worms, and so on. And when the tide comes in, then it slowly pushes all the birds right up um, against the shoreline, as it were, so the feeding area gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And because of this, um, we've actually built a number of bird watching hides on the edges of the mangroves. So when the tide comes in and it and so pushes the bird closer and closer to the mangroves, then it means you know, visitors can have a very unique chance to see the literally thousands of birds at very, very close quarters. <laughs> You don't have to be a hardcore eco-tourist to get a thrill out of dolphin watching, especially when you're spotting rare pink dolphins. Also known as Chinese white dolphins, there are about 250 living in Hong Kong's harbor. But their life is not always easy. The dolphins like to follow fishing boats because there's not as much fish available as there used to be for them and it's basically an easy feed for them so the fishermen will go where the dolphins are and vice versa. Uh, the problem is the dolphins often get caught up in fishing nets and it's a major operation to disentangle cetaceans from nets and sometimes there's nothing you can do to help them and just like us if they can't come up to breathe they, they do drown. So the, the idea of following a fishing boat is a, a double-edged sword, really, for the dolphins. They get a free feed, but they're risking their lives. Even Hong Kong's downtown core is more than skyscrapers, streets and shopping. Hong Kong Park is a great place to rest your feet and enjoy a slice of life. What is so unique about this place is that it is right in the center of the uh, city, in Central District. And among all the high rises, all the skyscrapers, the tall buildings, the office buildings, and the banks. In summer, during lunchtime, from Monday to Friday, you will see a lot of people who work in the office having lunch here. Every morning, Tai Chi takes over some of the city's parks. This ancient martial art is the most popular form of gentle exercise. So if Hong Kong's hustle and bustle is leaving you a little overwhelmed, don't worry. There are even free Tai Chi lessons for tourists. And in no time, you'll have your balance back. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.